week 13 of the college football season, the penultimate weekend of the college football regular season. And I am Johnny Sports Network, here to provide you with my week 13 college football predictions. And only three weeks remain in the race to the college football playoff. And so far, the only team that has clinched a spot in the college football playoff, number one, Oregon, 11-0 on the season, regardless of what happens next week, even if Oregon were to lose to Washington, they would still be in the playoff. They have the best win of the season against Ohio State, Boise State. They have a win against them in week two. So Oregon, they are in the college football playoff. And we have a few teams this week who can clinch a spot in the college football playoff with a win this week. The seven games on the docket, Ole Miss and Florida, Vanderbilt and LSU, Alabama and Oklahoma, Penn State and Minnesota, BYU and Arizona State, Army and Notre Dame, and closing things out with the game of the week, a top five showdown in the horseshoe, Indiana and Ohio State. Without further ado, let's get to the week 13 college football predictions right here on the Johnny Sports Network. Game number one on the docket this week. Old Miss and Florida. Florida upset LSU at home last week, and they are at home again in the swamp. Can the Gators pull off an upset for the second consecutive week? Florida, they have exceeded expectations, in my opinion, as they had the toughest schedule going into the season. And a lot of people were only expecting Florida to win maybe only three games this season, maybe four at the most. But they have five wins on the year, one more win away from bowl eligibility. Can they get it here, upsetting Ole Miss? And I have said it before, a top 10 team going on the road, it doesn't matter where they go on the road. It's an automatic trap game. And BYU proved last week that it's a trap game even if you're at home. So every single game for top 10 teams in the month of November, a trap game, whether at home or away. But Florida, they are going to have their hands full against this Ole Miss offense. Not only is... Jackson Dart, third in the FBS in passing yards, with 3,409 on the year. They are second in total offense, averaging 539.5 yards per game. They're scoring 40.7 points per game on average, which is fourth in the FBS. They're also fifth in the FBS in scoring defense, only giving up an average of 12.9 points per game. While Florida, they are 98th in total defense. And the defense was on the field last week for Florida for 41 minutes and 43 seconds. And despite that, they were resilient and they pull off the upset. And also the offensive line for Florida is going to have their hands full. As Ole Miss, they have 46 sacks on the year, which is first in the FBS. I do think Ole Miss, they will overcome this trap game and they will win. I am curious to see how competitive of a game Florida will make this. As Florida, they have been competitive a few times this season. They've exceeded those expectations. And last week, it was a much-needed win. I do think that may have kept Billy Napier around for at least another couple of seasons, but I think Ole Miss wins this week. Vanderbilt and LSU. Vanderbilt has been one of the many surprises in this college football season. I do think a better team than 
their six and four record does show their worst game of the season was against South Carolina a couple of weeks ago. And they go on the road to take on an LSU team that is on a three game losing streak. Quarterback Garrett Nussmeyer for the Tigers, he's seventh in the FBS in passing yards with 3,126 on the season. Both of these teams, they are in the top 20 in time of possession. LSU is 15th, Vanderbilt is 17th. And LSU's biggest problems this season has been their inability to stop running quarterbacks. Diego Pavia has 628 rushing yards on the season with five rushing touchdowns on the year. And part of Vanderbilt's success has been the leadership of Diego Pavia, as well as them being seventh in red zone offense, scoring on 94.4% of their red zone trips. LSU, they are eighth in third down conversion percentage converting on third down 49.3% of the time. This game doesn't have any college football playoff stakes or anything like that, but this is essentially to get into a better bowl game. And despite LSU being on a three-game losing streak, I do think they get it done here. I do think that worst case scenario, this is the kind of game that LSU, they just somehow find a way to win with Vanderbilt having a bye week last week. I do think it is going to help them in this game, but I do think they will provide another valiant effort, but I think they will fall short and LSU gets the win. They get back into the win column. Alabama and Oklahoma. Alabama, one of the many teams who are in control of their own destiny. A win this week against Oklahoma and a win next week against Auburn in the Iron Bowl. And a Missouri win against Mississippi State or Arkansas. And Alabama will be in the SEC championship game. This week, they take on an Oklahoma team that has had a really disappointing year. Oklahoma in their debut season in the SEC. It has been a disappointing one and one to forget as they are still looking for that sixth win for bowl eligibility. And they have been back and forth among their quarterbacks this season. Are we going to see Jackson Arnold or Michael Hawkins Jr. at quarterback for the Sooners in this matchup? I genuinely don't think it is really going to matter who starts at quarterback for Oklahoma. Even though this is an automatic trap game for Alabama, Oklahoma just hasn't proven to me this season they are capable of pulling off an upset of this magnitude. Even though Oklahoma defensively, they could stay in the game as they are 23rd in total defense this season, along an average of 319 yards per game. They are 15th in first down defense. So if they can win at the line of scrimmage on early downs, then there is a chance for the Sooners. But I just don't know if Oklahoma is going to have the offense to win this game. Alabama, they are 32nd in total defense, allowing an average of 324.7 yards per game, 10th in scoring defense, only giving up an average of 16.9 points per game. They're 30th in total offense, averaging 438.2 yards per game. They're 8th in scoring offense, averaging 39.5 points per game. And Alabama is also fourth in turnover margin. And Oklahoma, they have allowed 41 sacks this season, the second most in the FBS. As much as upsets are inevitable in November, 
I just don't see an upset here. Oklahoma, they just had too disappointing of a season for me to be convinced that they have what it takes to pull off this upset. I am going with Alabama in this game. I do think Alabama, they should win convincingly, but we'll have to wait and see if that is indeed the case. But I am picking the tide in this one. Up next, we have another trap game, Penn State and Minnesota. I do think this is a win and you're in game for Penn State. Regardless of what happens next week with Penn State, I do think if they win this game to get their 10th win of the season, I do think even if they lose to Maryland next week, I do think they will have their spot clinched in the college football playoff. Penn State, they are fourth in total defense, only giving up an average of 272.6 yards per game. They're sixth in scoring defense, only giving up an average of 13.6 points per game. They are fifth in third down conversion percentage, Converting on third down 52.5% of the time. And going into the season, when it was first revealed of this new 12-team playoff, immediately I did say that Penn State and Old Miss would be the two biggest beneficiaries of this 12-team playoff. Because Penn State has been that team time and time again where they win 10 games very consistently, maybe nine games the worst, but they just can't win against the big-time opponents, the Ohio States and the Michigans of the world. And Penn State this season, this is their best chance at winning a national championship, in my opinion, that I think they will have for a while. As Tyler Warren, their tight end, Mr. Versatility, as he has been a tight end, a wide receiver, a center, even a quarterback. And he really did save Penn State season. If it weren't for him, I really doubt that they win against USC. And out of all the teams in the top 10, I do think Penn State is the team that is most likely to be upset this week. As Minnesota, I do think, matches up better to Penn State than a lot of people may think. Minnesota, they're 11th in total defense, only giving up an average of 296.4 yards per game. 12th in scoring defense, only giving up an average of 17.7 points per game. They are 18th in third down conversion percentage, converting on third down 46.6% of the time. And I'm bringing this up because I think it will come into play in this game. Minnesota, they are leading the FBS in fourth down conversion percentage, converting on fourth down 87.5% of the time. I do think that if Minnesota does play the typical P.J. Fleck football I do think that they will be able to pull out this upset. I do think at the very least, Minnesota does cover in this game. I think at this point, they are 12 and a half point underdogs. I think Minnesota keeps this to a one possession game. And if they don't pull off the upset, I do think it's a one possession game. It's a game that Penn State, they have to find a way to win. I do want to call for the upset in this one, but I just think this is a game that Penn State finds a way to win, and they clinch their spot in the playoff, but don't be surprised if Minnesota pulls off this upset. BYU and Arizona State. BYU looks to respond after losing their first game of the season last week at home against Kansas, a Kansas team that I have felt is a much better team than what their record shows. As the deal with Kansas this season has 
been their inability to win the one possession games. And BYU, they held their own defensively. It's just that their offense, they could not produce enough points to win the game. And a turnover on special teams is what made the difference in that game. And they go on the road to take on a very underrated Arizona State team. Running back Cam Scadaboo, 1,074 rushing yards on the season, 11th in the FBS. And quarterback Sam Levitt, he's only completing about 61% of his passes this season. But he has only thrown four interceptions this season, along with 17 touchdown passes and 1,906 passing yards. BYU, they only allowed 73 rushing yards against Kansas last week. So I do think BYU, for them to win the game, they will have to contain Camp Scadaboo. And BYU, they kind of ruined my plans this week. As I was going through the Week 13 schedule, trying to come up with the seven best games this week, as soon as Arizona State upset Kansas State, which I had called, by the way, I did say if Cam Scadaboo did play in the game, Arizona State would win because his status was in question until game time. As soon as Arizona State won, It was clear that they were going to be ranked in the top 25. I'll be surprised if they're not in the top 25 in the committee rankings tomorrow night. As soon as I was, as I was watching the BYU Kansas game, I felt like with the way it was going, it was looking a lot like the game against Utah the week prior. It was okay. BYU, they're going to find a way to win this game. In the final two minutes of this game, and BYU is going to survive in advance, and they'll go on the road against Arizona State the next week, and Arizona State or BYU was going to be my upset pick the week, but now Arizona State is favored by about three to four points, which I understand why they are. And maybe even if BYU, if they found a way to win against Kansas, maybe Arizona State, they're probably still favored by maybe a point and a half or two points. I'm curious to see how far BYU drops in the committee rankings tomorrow night. I'm going to pick Arizona State to win this game, even though it's not an upset since Arizona State's favored. Considering the rankings are concerned, This would be considered an upset. This is essentially a playoff game as whoever loses this game is going to be eliminated from playoff contention. I'm going to go with the underrated Arizona State team against the BYU team that I have found overrated for weeks. Army and Notre Dame. Army looks to stay undefeated, stay in the college football playoff race, as the automatic non-power conference qualifier. And they look to shock the world. Looking to upset Notre Dame in Yankee Stadium. While for Notre Dame, I'm not 100% certain if they would be officially in the college football playoff with a win. I am about 98% sure If Notre Dame were to win this game, they would be in the playoff. But if they did lose to USC next week, I'm not sure how the committee would feel about that when you consider the fact Notre Dame is not in a conference. For Army, quarterback Bryson Daly, 1,062 rushing yards on the year, 14th in the FBS. While Riley Leonard, in Notre Dame's seven-game winning streak since the loss to Northern Illinois, 1,468 passing yards, 12 touchdown passes, and only two interceptions, and also 562 rushing yards 
and 12 rushing touchdowns. Army averages nearly 335 rushing yards a game. Notre Dame, they are 43rd in rushing defense, allowing an average of 126.2 rushing yards per game. Army is second in time of possession. So will Army be able to extend drives against Notre Dame? While Notre Dame, they are third in scoring defense, only giving up an average of 11.4 points per game. They are sixth in total defense, only giving up an average of 277.1 yards per game. Army, they are second in scoring defense, only giving up an average of 10.33 points per game. They are fifth in total defense, only giving up an average of 273.9 yards per game. I do think a lot of people will think that this is going to be a lot like the Navy game against Notre Dame a few weeks ago, where Notre Dame, they won very convincingly. And a part of that is early turnovers for Navy really did them in that game. I do think if Army, if they can play clean football and not turn the ball over, not give Notre Dame any extra chances, then I do think they have the chance to shock the world. Army, they have no fear. They do not fear any opponent. I do think Army, they keep this game close. But I think at the end of the day, Notre Dame, they get the job done in a game that I think Army is going to be in it from start to finish. I just don't think Army is going to pull out this upset. I just think, worst case scenario, it's a lot like Penn State against Minnesota this week. They somehow find a way to win, but they still get the job done. I am picking the Irish. Closing things out with the game of the week, Indiana and Ohio State, a top five showdown in the horseshoe, a win and you're in the playoff, regardless of what happens next week and the week after that in conference championship weekend. Indiana, they had a bye week last week, so they have had two weeks to prepare for this Ohio State team. And they also did sign an extension with head coach Kurt Signitti. For Indiana, this is the biggest game of the season. Not only that, but perhaps the biggest game in school history. While Ohio State, they did have a 31-7 win over Northwestern last week in Wrigley Field. However... They looked really sluggish to start the game. Perhaps they were looking ahead to this Indiana team. And the world is waiting to see what this Indiana team is truly made of. As the criticism Indiana has faced this season, the fact they haven't played any good teams, the fact they don't have a victory over anyone with a winning record so far this season, That is part of the reason why people have mixed feelings about this Indiana team. Yes, they have been winning games, but the criticism people have is who they're against, which you can't fault Indiana for winning against who they're scheduled to play. To be undefeated at this point in the college football season, that is an accomplishment in itself, regardless of who you're up against. Ohio State is second in total defense, only giving up an average of 250.8 yards per game. Indiana, third in total defense, only giving up an average of 255.5 yards per game. Indiana leads the FBS in scoring defense, only giving up an average of 10.3 points per game. Indiana, seventh in scoring defense, only giving up an average of 13.8 points per game. 
Indiana, they lead the FBS in rush defense, only giving up an average of 72.2 rushing yards per game. They are 15th in total offense, averaging 453.2 yards per game. Ohio State, 17th in total offense, averaging 451.4 yards per game. Ohio State, they lead the FBS in red zone offense, scoring on 97.4% of their red zone trips. Indiana, 6th in red zone offense, scoring on 94.6% of their red zone trips. And I do think this game is going to be a much better game than what I've seen a lot of people talk about. I have seen people talk about Indiana being a fraudulent team because of who they've played this season, which again, you cannot fault Indiana for winning against teams they're scheduled to play. The objective is to win every single week. And now they go on the road to take on an Ohio State team, and everybody is expecting Ohio State is going to dominate this game from start to finish, and Indiana is going to be exposed for the fraudulent team they've been all season long. But I don't think that's the case. I do think that this is going to be a lot like the matchup between these two teams in 2020, where it was a high-scoring game. And Indiana, they competed really well with Ohio State. It was a touchdown game. And if one or two things went differently in that game, Indiana, they probably would have won that game. And I think that is going to be the case in this game as well. I think Indiana, they're going to take full advantage of having the extra week to prepare for Ohio State. At the end of the day, though, I just feel there are too many playmakers on this Ohio State offense for Indiana to handle at the end of the day. I think that Indiana, they do make this a game, but at the end of it, I just feel Ohio State is going to win this game. But if Indiana does win this game, then I do think they are going to finally get that respect that they do deserve, in my opinion. As Indiana, they've been the biggest surprise of the college football season so far. And Indiana, they just need to win either this week or next week to clinch a spot in the playoff, which I do think they'll get it done one way or another. Either they pull off the upset this week and shock the world, as they are nearly two touchdown underdogs, or they win next week against Purdue, a one-win Purdue team on the season. But as I've mentioned, just too many playmakers on Ohio State's offense, I feel like, for Indiana to pull off this upset. And that will do it for my Week 13 college football predictions. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. For those of you that tune in for the NFL predictions, the NFL predictions for week 12 will be up tomorrow. For those of you that don't, enjoy the games this weekend, and I hope to see you back next week for week 14, Rivalry Weekend. Enjoy the games this weekend. Until next time, remember, Vegas is always watching.